Hey everybody, <clears throat> Thursday y'all, caught me after another full day and I'm at my, probably one of my favorite decompression spots, I've got two or three out here, this one, uh, <clears throat> this one I like, even in the short time I've been here I already got memories with it with Abby and Malta and, <clears throat> sorry about that, incoming call, I guess they're not watching the video, that's fine, but anyway this outside my mom's kitchen window, <clears throat> it's in my throat, and uh, just kind of a quiet spot in the shade where the songbirds are. I uh, got home a little while ago and <clears throat> thought I'd let the chickens run around and see how how much of uh, their boundaries they would push. So we'll go check on them in a minute. I don't think they're getting too adventurous. Old shirt says Merit. We've been talking about work ethic or we did yesterday. And hey, Margaret, how are you? Hey, Joe. Of course, this shirt's got a special meaning. I shared it in a few videos back with a great group of folks, Labor of Love USA, but merit is something that, um, kind of a lost word. It kind of gets watered down these days. But in relation to work ethic, I got to see the answer to, to that today. Jordan, my son that lives with me, went with me to Huntington today. He had to get some things done with my, my dad. <clears throat> got him a haircut and I he'd overheard I guess he watched the video and heard about uh, my helper yesterday and how he couldn't hang with that trench digging and today held the the biggest task of all we had to to uh, we're laying some some electrical conduit for some security lights there and had to get across a, a road that was had a gravel an asphalt bed topped with rocks so about four inches of nothing but Nothing you could dig with a shovel. Well, he wanted to come with me. He didn't have to. Hey, Roxanne. So he did. And uh, I thought he was just along for the ride and turned around and he had a pickaxe out and was getting after it. And that young man put in some work this afternoon. Didn't get paid for it. Wasn't about that. He was there to help. And I don't know that I could have done it without him. And on the way home from Huntington, poor thing was just, you know how you fall asleep riding in a car? You start drooping, and you droop. <laughs> he was touching his knees by the time we hit Nacogdoches. Worn smooth out. But I'm going to give him some merit today and some recognition for, without being asked, stepping up to the plate and helping out old dad. Hey, Pamela. I uh, I guess that's how it should be. But his, his hole was a little bit deeper and faster than mine was, but I was proud to see it. He didn't back up from it. But uh, So that work ethic's still out there. And I think it comes from down deep. And just proud, proud dad moment today. Again, not working on the place today. We'll, uh, looks like it's going to be Saturday before I can really get anything done. I'm antsy. I'm, I come home and I only have about an hour and a half of sunshine and probably three or four weeks of projects. But um, we'll get to it. We're not going anywhere anytime. Look at these old chickens there. They're behaving. Oh, humid, is it? Oh, my. I think I uh, I drank maybe <clears throat> three gallons of water today and sweated out about 15. It's funnier. It's actually I sweat more in the morning when it's cooler. I guess it's just thicker then. But uh, it's it's kind of it's kind of nice though because you get a a good dusting of of a heavy dew on uh, all the foliage out here, and that's what keeps everything green. I'll show you these running chickens. Hey Joyce, how are you? <clears throat> They don't want to get too far from home. <laughs> they got all this they could be taken off into. I mean, everywhere. But nope, they're staying about 10 foot from the from the roost. Of course, that makes me feel better. I don't have to chase them. Isn't that something? <laughs> they're loving it. Finding grub worms and foliage. And some of y'all that do free raised chickens, you already, you're ahead of the game and know they do that quite easily but kind of a big step for me hey Kim how are you left them alone I hadn't been last couple of times I tested I was out here with them but I'll put them up there directly I think the fence is there to keep the critters out more than keep them in <laughs> they know where the feed bucket and the water and the roost is at and they ain't ready to go too far from it <clears throat> but I don't know if my aunt Pat got on here or not she was asking where we're gonna be live tonight if so, up in Delaware area, 
I'll say hi to AP like she wanted me to. So there's that, even if she watches it after. Six, huh, Joyce? Well, we got about 50 of them out there. Had one, Kimberly, you asked me earlier about one, any of them dying from the heat. I don't think that's why this one decided to go go wherever they go. But uh, had a dead one in there this evening. But, so I guess the count's down to about 48. <laughs> that's still plenty. <laughs> yeah. Another pretty day. It's hot. <clears throat> hot, hot. That's Texas, and I wouldn't trade it. Look at that old mo. mo hey, there she is. There's AP. She, she, oh, man, Joe. Um, goodness. Yeah, you're a native. Well, from Texas, anyway. Well, Joe wants a, a memory. Well, I've shared this one before, but <clears throat> one of my most vivid and uh, my sister teaches school down south. I know I talk about her all the time, but I'm proud of her and blessed to have drawn the lot to be her brother. But we try to talk as much as possible. And today was the kiddo's last day of school down there, and that's what's happening all over. And uh, she's still got some in-service days to take care of. But kind of brings to mind this time of year <clears throat> when we get out of school. Of course, we was up here about at least one, one weekend a month. They're just visiting. But uh, we'd get to go stay like everybody else. Summer vacation, a couple of weeks, maybe a week at Memaws and Nacogdoches where I am now, and a week down in Orange with my paternal grandparents, James and Gladys Johnson. And uh, But when we'd, we'd come up here, going down south to, to the Orange area was always a little bit easier. Wasn't as much work involved down there. as was, was more vacation. But uh, come up here, you're just going to go to work, but it was a fun work. And it's a, the, my mother was the baby of six um, siblings and offspring here. And uh, they, they worked, the work they did in agriculture. They supported and paid cash for everything off of uh, farmland, watermelons, and then later peas and things of that nature. But such a big family. And of course, the generations, two or at least two kids in each, each family, and then from their grandkids and so on and so forth. A lot of eating going on so <clears throat> it turned in probably the late 70s mid 70s forward they basically farm for the family so what happens with grandkids they're pea pickers so here we come for summer vacation ready to just have a good time and part of that good time was picking peas so we'd get up about oh about daybreak have some homemade biscuits and eggs and out of the chicken yard bacon never did raise pigs but we had bacon and uh get full and hit that hit that pea patch and it's right over yonder it's where i've been getting those blackberries out of it's probably the whole length of it's probably a mile long every bit of it was in purple whole peas and we'd pick and pick and pick and that humidity would just uh it just dripped down you my sister should put in the work and uh i'd put in the work and there'd be different family members here then we'd hit the front porch about 10 o'clock. That's about all the heat you could stand. And uh, start shelling those purple hole peas until your thumbs turn purple. If any of y'all have ever done that, you'll know what I'm talking about. Didn't have a pea sheller. Wouldn't have wanted it. Well, we did. It was us. <laughs> but on that old porch swing and just sitting there shelling peas. Probably took us an hour or two, five or six bushels. And then I don't know what they did with them from there. That was what they did. I was just a kid. But I know that they'd go put them up and then all of a sudden all the older folks would be gone. They'd be napping about noon, they'd eat and take a nap. And we're out here in the hot sun trying to figure out something to keep us from being bored. Then they'd get up and start rattling the fishing poles. We'd head off to San Rayburn, just down the road here, private access, and catch a big old mess of white crappie. Back in the 70s, it was prolific down there on San Rayburn come back and get those fish cleaned up right on this old cellar back here it's uh it's still there old storm cellar never been in it but it's nasty inside of it but the top of it's concrete made a perfect butcher block i'll show it to you here and get more orientation All right let's see well, we'll have it. it's right in between those two buildings out there anyway <clears throat> but uh Many a, many a fish has 
has uh, turned into a fillet on that old storm cellar over the last 20, 30 years on this place. And we'd sit down and eat a big old supper, fresh white crappie, white perch, and uh, there it is. Well, let's see. Hey, Brandon. Uh, I can't get my orientation right. Anyway, it's over there. And purple hole peas. But it doesn't get any better than that. But anyway, <clears throat> kind of a long story. But there you go, Joe. Hey, Faith, how are you, sweetheart? I don't know if Lance got on here or not. He sent me a request a while ago. I guess he changed accounts, my son up in Illinois. But, well, the chickens, they're starting to go back in the roost, looks like. Yeah, that story made it a long one tonight. Didn't have a whole lot to talk about. It's a good question, Joe. But got some other ones related to agriculture we'll share soon. But hey, Jimmy, one last shot of the the chickens. I'll call it for the night. There they are. Well, some of them. Look, look at them running. They're so silly. <laughs> like, did he bring us food? <laughs> that beats everything. Like a dog. I ain't bringing no food. Maybe you're going to be supper tonight. What you think about that? Oh, there's Al. I did name one. He's a rooster. He ain't going nowhere. Look at it. We're going to call him Al. That's what Jordan named him. Well, I'll have to ship you some up there, Joe. I'll be growing some. Of course, I'm a dreamer, and but I'll put action to it. This whole piece of land right there is nothing but pasture. And I've already done the math on it. If I can uh, get a tractor down here to bring it, break it up, and I've got access to a few. We may see all that in purple whole peas next spring. That's the plan. That'd be really cool. But we'll see. Yeah, I'll, I'll ship you some up there. That'll make them big old navy beans and white northerners. You'll throw them away. You won't eat them no more. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> uh, it's hard to beat some purple holes. Sure is. All right, we'll leave y'all with a shot of little old chickens tonight. And Al. Al thinks he's running things, don't he? <laughs> y'all have a good night. We'll see you tomorrow.